This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-hosts, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hello. Uh, and this has been... It's, it's been kind of a week, because we're doing it a little later than normal. It started with me having to drive my cousin up to Kentucky and then drive back, which wasn't so bad, but, you know, time. And then, yeah. what was it, yesterday our schedules were just, like, all out of sync, and we're like, oh, shit! Yeah. This is what happens when I go on the road somewhere. Yeah, I go I go somewhere, I come back, things start falling apart, and and, and I think, what was it, the lead singer of Survivor died, too, oh, while really? I was gone? Yeah. And it's like, God damn it! Uh, and Betty White died. Her hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I... oh. <laughs> oh, God. Everybody who posted oh, that link, I was like, seriously, just just reread it. Please. Yeah. Reread it. I I I shared it. I I shared it. I don't think I left any uh, uh, context with it. <laughs> I I just shared it and. My, one of my friends is like, oh, no, no. And I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking, did you read the article? My I know you're was, smarter than this. Yeah, a friend of mine posted it, and he was like, oh, I can't believe she was so funny in some show. And um, somebody was like, yeah, they said something about her. And he was like, so what was your favorite role? And the response was her next one. <laughs> 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 and he still didn't get it. It's like, it, 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 like I'm, I, I haven't checked the post today, but I'm like, I, I wonder if he still doesn't get it. it like, I hope he does. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, and, and, and your, your one hint, even if you just look at the headline, the word died is, is spelled a certain way. That's yeah. your one hint if you just look at the headline. Oh, lordy. So speaking of headlines and and silly things, uh, we got we've got a couple of things. This is more religious based showings and stuff today. One involve and both of them involve Hollywood actors. And the first one we've got actually comes from the Blaze, Blaze theblaze.com. And the only reason I know about this is because Becky had sent me the link with the movie poster and everything. And the headline reads, Hollywood actor says his new movie will hammer political correctness and frustrate atheist activists. Well... I, I, I still don't believe that this movie is actually real. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm staying firm in that belief because mostly just based on the poster. Yeah. I love the poster. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> oh it's... my god, that is just like, it, it is everything great about unintentional comedy rolled into one. Oh yes. Yeah. It reminds me of Last Action Hero, just Christmas. <laughs> Last Santa's Hero. There you go. <laughs> oh, so actor Kirk Cameron. Oh, we love him, don't we? Oh, yes. Is taking political correctness to task this fall with a new movie that aims to deflate arguments regularly made against Christmas while simultaneously pushing back against atheist activists' annual attacks on the holiday. Um, Question. I have a question. When did when did atheists attack a holiday? Uh, last I checked, the, the, a lot of the atheists and agnostics that I know, myself included, we have no problem with the holiday of Christmas, especially now that, especially you know, with the whole commercialization and shit. But even the religious aspects, as long as you keep it, you know, kind of private and don't shove it down everybody's throat, we're okay with it. Right. Um, well, then you're attacking the holiday, according to him. And to be right. fair, holiday, holy day. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you have to understand, Kirk Cameron, that it does not mean the same thing in modern America anymore. Yeah, just... No. Uh, no. Like, I mean, on, on Christmas, uh, Chris, we don't all... I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that there are no people who go to church, you know, on that day, but, you know, yeah, not everybody gathers to, to go to Mass, you know, to go to Christ's Mass. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, a lot of people just gather... Each eat food, open presents, you know. Yep, that's and, what my family always did. You know, my my brother-in-law goes to mass, but he's the only one. And we play a game of how long it will take for one of us to, you know, stop resisting the urge to defenestrate a small child. <laughs> which, which, uh, you know, full disclosure, we don't really defenestrate children, but you know, 
we really want to sometimes. <laughs> uh, in Saving Christmas, Cameron plans to tackle some of the most controversial and disputed issues surrounding the celebrate of, celebration rather, of Jesus Christ's birthday. Claims that he says have had a profound impact on the way believers and non-believers alike view the Christian celebration that you guys stole from pagans. <clears throat> but you see, that's one of the myths that this movie's going to undo. Yeah, and and is it there's, really? There's even I don't a quote. Know, there's even a quote. We take on some of the most commonly parroted myths about the origins of Christmas. I'm assuming that's a quote from Kirk Cameron himself. It doesn't say. Yeah, it says Cameron exclusively told the Blaze Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. And while he has no idea exactly how atheists will respond to the feature film, eh, probably meh. Or ha ha ha! This looks so. This looks so shoddy. You know, probably. Yeah. Which is slated probably. to open uh, November fourteenth in theaters across America. Excuse me. He predicts they likely won't be too elated with its storyline. Uh, well. <laughs> That's a hit or miss um, there. <laughs> I don't know. Like, as a comedy, sure. sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks pretty funny to me. Comedy. Yeah. Yeah, Kirk Cameron is a goldmine of unintentional comedy. Like, go. I mean, I don't know if you ever saw Fireproof, the the one where he's a fireman who's protected by God from from burning in the fire or something. <laughs> no. yeah, his character, Yeah, his character has, like, an addiction to pornography. So... In, in, in order to battle that, he takes a sledgehammer to his computer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I was younger and, and I was in, in, the, in the whole Christian religion and everything, you know, I, I had a similar thing because I had that mindset, you know, pornography was evil, but yet I still looked at it. I still hoarded it every now and then, printed out pictures or what have you, you know. And every time I wanted to, you know, try and rid myself of it, I didn't smash the computer, mainly because it was my dad's and he would have kicked my ass. But even then, you don't smash your computer. You can delete the shit off of there. And right. the, the worst I did was um, take the pictures that I had printed out and you know set them on fire in, in a safe area, of course. You know, I didn't just like throw them on my bedroom floor and light them ablaze. No, I didn't do that. You know, it was in a, in a safe environment. I, I made sure it was safe, but I still burned them. And then they didn't gather up everything in your room and put it in a pile and then burn it all. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but you know, that's the extent of what I did. Again, like I said, no sledgehammer because that was my dad's computer. And even yeah. now, I wouldn't take a sledgehammer to this computer because it was a it was a birthday slash Christmas gift from from my dad. <laughs> yeah. And and it cost like a thousand bucks. I think I'm, go right. I'm, I'm, you know, and plus I'd be kind of out of work for a little while. Uh. Yeah. No, I didn't, yeah. Yeah. Computers are not just, I mean, despite what, what, what some might think, they're not just for pornography. So, yeah, you don't have to <laughs> go. The internet is for porn. The <laughs> internet is for porn, yes. <laughs> but there are plenty of other things on the internet as well. So maybe going to a few counseling classes or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're Sex that, addicts anonymous or something. Yeah, if you're that worried about you, you, know, you know, being addicted to the point where you can't function, yeah, go. Yeah. Well, and if you feel like you can't use your computer because you are so addicted to porn, don't break your fucking computer. Yeah. Especially um, computer prices. There are other things you can do. For instance, sell it. Yeah. Or if you are like uh, my parents when I was a child. And, you know, you're punishing somebody from using the computer. You take the power cord and you hide it. There you go. <laughs> right. You can't but turn if you it sell on. The you can't look at computer porn. There you yeah, go. Yeah, but if you sell the computer to somebody else, then that means you're giving them the opportunity <laughs> to enter a gateway of sin. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what that, I was That's funny. Too. You put it as the... The gateway of sin, and I was going to say the gift of internet porn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The sin of the gift. Uh, the gift of sin. The gift of sin, yeah. The gift of sin. Yes. Hooray! Episode title. <laughs> <laughs> the gift of sin. Yes, that is. That is so going to be the title. Definitely. <laughs> In fact, I am putting it in the file right now. There it goes. <laughs> and everybody who's watching it will know that I actually did it because there it is right there. You're watching this You're watching this on YouTube. You look down below. The Gift of Sin. There it is. 
<laughs> Good. Um, so, I assume they're going to get frustrated to see some of their best arguments deflated by this movie, because we take on some of the most commonly parroted myths about the origins of Christmas, Cameron exclusively told The Blaze Tuesday. Watch the trailer. Uh, not going to put it on here because we don't want to worry about getting slammed up the butt with copyright, but um, you can you can find it. You can find it on YouTube. Just look up uh, Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. It's okay. He'd never slam us up the butt for copyright. Oh, no. <laughs> well, That's he may not. Sin. There you go. <laughs> he may not, but YouTube bots, man. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah, really. Hmm. Unlike some of his more recent projects, Saving Christmas isn't a documentary. It's a comedic narrative that weaves together educational elements that, through a character-driven storyline, addresses these common complaints and critiques. So it's supposed to be a comedy. I, I do yeah. believe it will be funny. Yeah. I just don't think it's oh. going to be funny in the way he thinks it is. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's, it's really, really hard to make a bad comedy, like, unintentionally funny. There's really, like, nothing sadder than, a, than an unfunny comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. I mean, there are things sadder, but, you know. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> There's nothing sadder. Well, okay, you know. Like okay, okay. Children. Speaking literally here, yes, there <laughs> are, but. Well, yeah. When it comes to movies, there are a few things sadder than a bad comedy. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm, the first thing that came to mind was Garbage Pail Kids. Just, Oof. Mm. Oh, but. Some things can be so bad that they are then good again, so. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking the room. <clears throat> yeah, troll I know. Yeah, well, yeah, Troll Two. I, I swear that Troll Two really. I mean, to go off on a on an unrelated tangent here, but Troll Two truly is like the the shining example of unintentional hilarity. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Be, beyond even that, that movie is just pure gold. Yeah. But uh, anyway. So. Cameron said some of the claims that will be addressed in the film include the notion that Christmas is really a church co-opting of winter solstice celebrations, oh, that Jesus was not born on December 25th, that Christmas trees are pagan, and that consumerism is overshadowing the true reason for the season. Okay, uh, let's see. A church co-opting winter solstice celebrations. Yes, that's true. Well, uh, it's sort of true. It, yeah. Not exactly the solstice, but, you know. It, it's close enough. Yeah. Uh, let's right. see. Jesus was not born on December 25th. They didn't ha use the same kind of calendar we did at the time. Yeah. So, but, so it was like, you know. Everybody like, in history is pretty certain that he was not actually born on December 25th. <laughs> yeah. He was probably right. born January. And, and, like, and the thing is, I don't understand why Kirk Cameron would think that's such a big deal. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we, we celebrate the, his birth on, on a different day. Why does it matter? Yeah, it's like we celebrate like, like Martin Luther King Jr. You know, we celebrate his his uh his 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 life, his birth and everything. Like what is it? Like second or third Monday of January or something? Yeah, we don't celebrate yeah. all of the president's birthdays on their birthday. Right. Oh. You know. And like, you know why we probably celebrate uh Christmas around that time? It's because it's right after the it is like, you know, like I said, it's a, it's after the winter solstice, so it's right when the light, you know, is starting to become more present, and there's going to be more sun and more abundance. The snows are going to melt, and life is going to come back to the world. So. And, yeah, it's right before the new year. Mm -hmm. Right. The sun is rising. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's he see. He has arisen. Yes. <laughs> the Christmas trees are pagan. Well, uh, if I'm remembering correctly... I'm pretty I, certain they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Festivus trees, that sort of thing. So, yeah. There's, and that, there's no Festivus trees. It's the Festivus pole. Festivus pole. I'm getting nope. I'm getting them mixed up. <laughs> yes. Six-foot aluminum pole requires no decoration. I find tinsel distracting. There you go. Oh, it needs to be like, wasn't there somebody that tried to make a Festivus pole out of beer cans or something? Yes. That was, like, last Christmas. Ah, yes, that's right. <laughs> and I was actually watching... Uh, a, the, the, their, uh, the Daily Show was doing a segment about Fox News, and they were they, they showed that segment about how this is, this, is, this is the kind of thing that Fox gets offended over. And, like, people are like, how is it that I have to drive around with my kid looking for a nativity scene, and then I have to point out, like, oh, no, it's baby Jesus is right there behind the Festivus pole made out of beer cans. And Jon Stewart's like... Or, you know, you could just 
make a nativity scene in your own yard. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> I um, mean... <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh... I mean, you don't have to... I mean, it's nice to drive around and look at all the pretty lights, but if you really... If you're jonesing that much for a nativity scene, get one. Yeah. Just, just, just go to the one. store and get one. Walmart probably sells them. You know, or Target. You know, I'm, I'm learning more and more of that. Or you can make that. one yourself if you're not all in the consumerist thing. There you go. And, it, well, of course, that would require you to be, you know, any kind of artistic. And if you're not artistic, well, just do the best you can. <laughs> Let's see. Jesus will understand. Yes. And that consumerism is overshadowing, overshadowing the true reason for the season. Oh, my God, how many years have I heard this? Just, yeah. It's like I seem to remember hearing about it when I was a kid. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it, it's it's it, it does have some nugget of truth to it, and that you know, I, I it is such a you know, it's such a big thing that happens, and it all you know, w- like once you enter December, practically mm-hmm. everything starts revolving around Christmas. And December. Yeah, I'm yeah. Thinking more you, like you barely need to get past Thanksgiving. Yeah, really. Or it's, hell, it's... even before Thanksgiving in some in some places. Yeah, yeah, Halloween. Like, somebody posted a picture the other day on Facebook. This is just going back to the whole commercialism angle. But of Halloween candy already out in the stores. Yeah, <laughs> Halloween candy at this point, sure. You know, because what, what, what do we have in September? We have Labor Day. Guess what? We've already passed it. Halloween is the next big holiday. That I know, but you would still expect back to school stuff, you know, at least into September. Yeah. Yeah. And and this was at least a week ago that I saw this. It was definitely in August. Ah, it was okay. so desperate that they needed like I need to get Halloween candy now because it's all going to be gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, anybody who buys Halloween candy now, it's not going to be there at Halloween. You're going to eat it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And don't 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 bring it into this house cuz while we do have six kids running around, they may try and eat it. Um there are also three adults, no, four adults up up here in this house, who really enjoy their candy. Case in point, look at my belly. <laughs> oh, but no, I think. Okay, if it comes to Halloween, if if we're gonna like do this whole thing earlier or whatever, make it earlier for like setup, staging setup or whatever, decoration setup, because some, especially if you want to have a haunted house. Yeah. You, so some of that stuff, if you try and do it last minute, it's going to be a little difficult to get. Yeah. And so having it a little earlier, even September, it's not not too early for me and for other people. Now, Christmas, on the other hand, who does a Christmas house? Seriously. I mean, uh, and well, I... in my hometown, there was there were these people who lived out in the country mm-hmm. who had the biggest Christmas display I've ever seen in my entire life. You could actually take your car and drive like through their property mm-hmm. Whoa. and drive through all of the, the different parts. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like people would travel elaborate. to come see this Christmas display. So there are people who do Christmas houses. Wow. Okay then. No, I, I can, I can believe that. I just, I've never, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've never been involved in, in that sort of thing. I mean, my, my folks like to set up uh, some, small decorations here and there, like a wreath outside the door. And uh, we like to make those uh, candles, those ice candles using like five gallon buckets Mm -hmm. that we set up uh, sort of along the pathway. And uh, I don't know, maybe like a string of lights along along the front of the house, but nothing apart from that, aside from, you know, the tree inside and maybe some, you know, some poinsettias here and there. Yeah. And even us here, I mean, we will, maybe we'll string up some lights along the front, like on the front porch, along the, front of the house and i i think we have like that inflatable snowman thing you know like those wacky wave you know those wacky arm flailing. wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man there you go thank you yeah similar to that in, in that you know you have the air constantly going into it or what have you um mm-hmm. but that's about it really at least as far as we go um you know and that's just outside inside of course they put up the nativity scene inside somewhere put up a christmas tree somewhere which with the way my mother rearranges the living room throughout the year, sometimes I, I just have to wonder, how, what do you even think that far ahead? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. But I don't um, know. I, I I I can certainly understand where the reasoning that consumerism is overshadowing 
you know the the reason for the season as it is right. comes from. But I I really don't believe that. I I, I agree. I think that at, at the heart of it, most people really get what the season is all about, and I think that it. It, it, I don't know. From my point of view, I mean, I live in a small town where everybody more or less kind of knows each other, but it just definitely feels like everybody acts a little sort of kinder or softer around everybody, and you know, just has a bit more respect. And it just, it just feels. It, it, you can feel the, the reason for the season as it is. Yeah, I grew up in a non-religious household, so. It, like I'm yeah. talking completely non-religious. Like I never went to church in my life. I was not baptized. Like, and right. we still did Christmas every year because it was a. Um, it's time to give. It's time to spend time with your family. Um, you know, and I actually remember being in I think the eighth grade, and I actually had to explain to the class what atheists do on Christmas. <laughs> and I was like the only thing that we don't do is go to church like otherwise we do exactly what you do yeah I, I also learned that firsthand when I was in Wyoming um, You know, I, I celebrated Christmas with a good friend of mine who non-religious atheist household it was pretty much the same thing except you know it's just just like you. Nobody went to church. In fact, I don't even pray over the meals. It's just yeah. There, you know, you there's get no, your food, there's you no praying. There's no church. But otherwise, you know, you're you're having a meal. You're giving gifts. You're spending time with your family. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same. Yeah. Although they did have pink mashed potatoes. That's just weird. <laughs> it is, but, it, but you know, it's just what? all all they did was just put in like some food coloring and made the potatoes pink. Oh. They mashed them, and it's it doesn't <laughs> that taste must any be different. Some weird family thing. Right? It is. Yeah, it no, is. I'm sure they don't taste any different, but it's like oh, mashed wow. curry. Mashed curry. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy. So that would uh, be really creepy if you just like went to take a bite and just went hi. <laughs> Going back to this whole the notion that Christmas isn't the, a church co-opting the winter solstice celebration thing in my head because it's like is he like I get that he's trying to say that like December twenty fifth isn't specifically a thing but you stole the whole twelve days of Christmas like yeah how are we supposed to believe that the church wasn't like yeah well. I mean, like, they turned the whole day, 12 days of Christmas, into a, a Christian religious concept. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, to continue on, it's a scripted story about a guy named Christian White. This is my, this is my favorite part of the article, aside from <laughs> the, the movie poster. Because I'm like, yeah. well, I guess we know who this movie is aimed at. The target yeah, audience. Much. Dudes. That was, like, Christian that was dudes. the moment where... Yeah, that was the moment when I when I read this article. Where I was just like, no, no, this is fake. This has to be fake. <laughs> There's no possible way that this can be real. But yeah. no. But Christian White, who represents the typical white Christian male, and he's what? got a... no. <laughs> really? no, I know, right? Oh my god, and he's got a bad case of religious bah humbugs. Cameron said, he is just deflating his wife's entire Christmas party because he has come to believe that everything we're doing at Christmas to celebrate is wrong. Ah, uh, yes. Straw uh, Atheist, one of the Christian's favorite. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, I want to go on set and just take a cow. And, and <laughs> there you go. Uh, the movie includes reenactments of the original Christmas tree story with portions and scripted scenes showing the nativity in the Council of Nicaea. 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 Okay. Nicaea. All right. Yeah. A pivotal event in the history of Christianity. Cameron, who is also one of the film's stars, well, duh, told, told the Blaze that he, that he decided to make Saving Christmas to celebrate the spirit of the holiday season while also pushing back against those who wish to snuff out the holiday's holy roots. The holiday's holy roots. Holy root, yes. Holy root. Wow, that... that... <laughs> I, I think I could make about... Maybe... It does have a holy root. It's just not Christian. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just no, no. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm just just going back to this this one paragraph where it says, 
uh, and like the, the main character is uh, doing everything to deflate his wife's Christmas party because he's trying to believe that everything doing a Christmas celebration. Seriously, who who actually does that? I don't like even who do who that. gives a shit. This isn't like, religious if you do enough shit, for me. You can't have any fun. Oh god! It's just like oh my god, this is too religious. Like how dare you? You know, use this time of year to celebrate your own personal faith, mm-hmm. while I can you know be comfortable with my lack of faith and not be offended by the fact that you have faith. Yeah, it's just really and. And it seems like between this and the, at least the first Left Behind movie, I've seen him, you know, and, and I think, you know, as one of you described, uh, Fireproof, it seems to start out as just being a general jerk ass in these movies and then suddenly converts. It's like, come on, can you play a different kind of character, Cameron? Come on, seriously. Yeah. I don't know if he's actually playing the main character in this because it's a, I um, think so, based on the movie oh, he, poster. Oh, he probably is. Yeah, it's it's true. It's just uh, IMDb. It says somebody else is listed as Christian, and he's just oh. part of the cast. But I don't know. Then why? Then why is he the only person on the movie poster? I know, because right? Nobody has... <laughs> Probably because he's the only like sellable person of the movie, or like the only person who's going to draw any kind of an audience. Wow. <laughs> Which really says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> when Kirk Cameron is your main draw. Uh, that's pretty bad. Oh, Christmas is probably my favorite time of the year, he said. It seems to be the time of year when even cranky, grumpy people seem to be touched by the spirit of generosity and kindness and brotherly love, and I know that ultimately stems from the true reason for the season, which is Christ. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but um, I-, I like to have the spirit of generosity and kindness and brotherly love well, beyond just Christmas time. I, I, sometimes it's a little on the harsher side, but I like to try and have it, and um, it has nothing to do with 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 your Christ there, buddy. It, it just doesn't. It's just I I like to do good. Does it have anything to do with Buddy Christ? I don't know. It could. <laughs> <laughs> I should get one. I should get a Buddy Christ. Put it here on my desk. <laughs> oh, so Cameron. Christmas can... is my favorite time of year too, yeah. but. It doesn't mean that I have to be all religious about it. Yeah. And and there's another good reason why Christmas is one of my favorite times of the year. It's not hot. Even in Florida, <laughs> it, it gets a little cooler, and I prefer the cooler weather. Like uh, this week when I was up in Kentucky, I was up over there overnight. It was like in the, in the upper 70s or whatever. Oh, my God. It felt so good. <laughs> oh, it was great. Oh. Yeah. I, don't know, I can I, I can only imagine I being being up in Alaska. It's actually been really warm these past few days, oh, yeah? but the weather here can shift so rapidly too. Like right now it's raining, mm-hmm. and it was like just blazing hot sun yesterday. Oof. And then you know we get the winter. Yeah, which which lasts how many months? <laughs> um, too many. There you go. <laughs> uh, although actually, last winter was. So so warm it was ridiculous like we had green grass in january and it was like in the 30s in february that's weird yeah yeah climate change doesn't exist right <laughs> mm. but you know the rest of the country was was freezing i mean it was so cold i mean yeah obviously yeah. we got all of your cold weather it was yeah, not exactly. fun <laughs> yeah oh. I was getting ready for work one morning and it was negative 20 Jesus. Oh man! <laughs> oh my God! It's fucking cold. Uh, and meanwhile, we're down here, and it's just like, really? Pass some of that down here, please. No, no, no. We get this every year. We're gonna take some of your weather. Yeah. Well, no, I was meaning the cold. I wanted some of the cold down here in Florida. God damn it! I know. That's what I'm saying. We're taking like the warm weather that you guys, yeah. or at least the temperate weather that you guys have. Yeah. There you go. Oh. We're just all converting. Okay. <laughs> I just don't know why the Midwest had to pick fucking frigid. It was awful. Uh, uh, Cameron continued, It's obvious that there is a deliberate attempt to snuff out the holy root that has produced all this wonderful Christmas time fruit. I think it's about time someone spoke out and made a movie about this. This poster. Oh, you guys, yep, my this God. poster. Okay. If if you then, do nothing else, just look, just seek out this poster. Yes, I I will try and remember to actually put it in the, 
in the actual uh, video version because this is just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Getting funnier the more you Yeah, I'm saving Christmas with a candy cane. Fuck yeah! Fucking Christmas! Yeah! I got the spirit of Christmas cradled right here in my arms! <laughs> I I use that voice because if you guys can see it, he's like wielding the candy cane like it's a club. And then, yeah, like, he's... Every, shit is literally exploding behind him. It's Not like literal gonna... shit, but things are literally exploding behind him. Yeah, There's like presents to... flying in the air and a Christmas tree and. And for it some reason, like and there's a to... cross down there at the bottom, too. It's like... Because <laughs> he's putting the Christ back in Christmas. It uh, seriously looks like he's about to just stomp you into the curb, too. It does. <laughs> and because of the angle that they they drew this at, I, I, I assume that it's drawn and... Um, it, it makes his foot look enormous. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I, I get that, like, it, they're forcing their perspective on this image... But it's like his foot is like half the size of his body, like his entire body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's about to step on like a hundred dollar bill too. So yes, you will put the Christ back in Christmas. Stomp. <laughs> oh my! Must be curb stomped over. Uh. The growing pains, growing pains actor, who has gone on to direct and produce numerous faith themed films, said that atheist activists' attempts to diminish the true nature of the holiday by taking aim at nativities and other symbols of faith amounts to political correctness run amok. No. No. Uh -huh. Well, let me get to this next one and we can, we can go on about that one. It is offensive to 90% of people in our country who want to see nativity scenes and who know the birth of the Christ child is the fundamental root of Christianity, which is the ideology that built this country, Cameron said. No! No! This, this, oh. this statistic. 90% 90, 90 of the people in the country? Okay. Really? Um, you know, not even 90% of the people in this country podcast <laughs> want to see nativity scenes want to see them I don't seek them out if it's there okay fine whatever it looks nice but then I move the fuck on I don't seek right. them out I, like, I, don't, well, okay. I don't really care either way but I'm not I'm not sitting at home being like man I really could go for a nativity scene right now <laughs> oh, I'm to find a I really well, want to just, listen to the way that this is worded, though. It is offensive to 90% of the people in our country who want to see nativity scenes and who know the birth of Christ child is the fundamental root of Christianity. He's basically saying that just 90% of those people that he yeah, describes. Yeah, 90% of this very specific <laughs> population. Yeah. <laughs> so just not even 100% of, of people who know that um, <laughs> the birth of the Christ child is the fundamental root of Christianity. Yeah. Not even 100% of those people want to see nativity scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. just a 10% driving around. It's like, well, whatever. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. And, and, and of course, going to the ideology that built this country. No, it wasn't. It was, you know, this country was not founded by Christians. It was founded by a bunch of well, deists and non-religious well, folks. Technically, the country, because <clears throat> I mean, th this is actually like um, something that I've I've thought about before. Technically, the country was settled by religious fundamentalists. That's true. Mm -hmm. But in when fact, the country... that's why they came here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, it was to escape religious persecution. But once things got a little further along, and we had our revolution and drafted our our system of government, it no, that was not the overriding force because that you know the. <laughs> The Puritans decided that the best way to deal with their problems was to burn witches. Yeah, that's not a fun thing. But well, no, no, no. Actually, no, not burn witches. Hang witches. What am I talking about? Right. Well, they may have burned them too. <laughs> I was no, like, I don't think anyone was technically burned. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I, I, I studied that in the school. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you are different. You, you have. A good story. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's like even. Okay, yeah, so the the Puritans were fucked up, but they still believed that, you know, it was only within their own communities that this should be an issue. Yeah. Right. Like, their whole reason for coming was because they didn't want anyone to tell them what to do. Right. Which is why we, you know, even if you think that this is a Christian nation, you should recognize that the people who came here to be Christian didn't want you to tell other people what to do. 
Exactly. And mm. unless they were specifically, you know, involved in your religious community. Right. If, if, if yeah, basically. I, I, I cannot really add or reword that one. You said it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, you know, because if people are going to point to the witch trials, then you have to understand that, you know, it was going after people in their in their communities, their religious communities, who, I mean, let's just forget the fact that it was completely psychotic, but <laughs> it's, it's a whole other issue. Um, yeah. Oh, Lordy. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to skim over just a little bit more, a couple of things in this article, because I do have one other one I want us to look at before we run out of time. Yeah. Um, let's see. It says, Saving Christmas isn't an angry rant about the culture war, he said. Instead, it's a celebration of the holiday and of the Christian faith. That's what? why we have the, that's why we have the goddamn Charlie Brown Christmas special. <laughs> what? No! Oh, come on. Hollywood actor says his new movie will hammer political correctness and rile atheists. How what? is that not an angry rant about the culture war? Exactly. No, it's a funny rant about the oh, culture war. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. it's a comedy. Heck you. Yeah. <laughs> As long as we put it all in comedy, it's okay. You know, comedy is great for a lot of things. It's a great, it's great for coping with things. It, it's great for making people laugh. It's even great to make money. But it's not the cure-all for everything. And even if you put it in a cloak of comedy, if, you, if you're fucked up and wrong, you're still fucked up and wrong. We're just going to laugh at you even harder because it's funny. Right. The guy who's punching you in the face repeatedly and telling you he's just kidding... Probably not serious. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to be kind of a bitch here. Uh-oh. <laughs> but oh. you see that picture of him that that's just like his headshot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, does he remind anyone else of a troll doll? <laughs> God. <laughs> just look at his face. Like, I can just see the big spiky hair. Yeah, yeah, without the hair. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> somebody, somebody needs to Photoshop that. Photoshop trolled all hair onto his head. That'd be oh. hilarious. <laughs> this is the internet. Maybe somebody's already done it. Yes, yes. Oh God! Somebody needs to do yeah. that. Yeah, for that Cameron, be... official troll. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and the rest of the article basically, you know, reiterates a lot of the things he said. You know, it's 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 celebrating things we love and believe in, and, and diving headfirst into the joint celebration that Christmas deserves, and a little background about how it'll be distributed, and and things about that. It's like man, whatever. So yeah, saving Christmas. And yes, Diamanda Hagen knows of its existence, and she will most likely go and see it and probably review it somehow. Oof. Probably a back st- backseat critique. <laughs> I you have to look up for that one. Oh, yes. November 14th. <laughs> or November 12th, I think. Yeah. Whatever. Um, <laughs> November 14th, yeah. Okay. Oh, so... <laughs> <laughs> so we look forward to that. But the other one we have is from conservativetribune.com, and the headline reads, Famous actor has message for atheists that they sure won't like. Well, oh, lordy. The Constitution of the United States protects the right of people to practice their religion freely and prohibits the government from abridging that right or from choosing an official state religion then mandating that religion on everyone. This is This is no... As the freedom, this is no, no, this is, this is no, 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 where was your editor? This is why you don't, you know, spell check. Look at a, this website. Do you think it, there's an editor anywhere? They need to hire oh, one. <laughs> they need to hire an editor. You know what? I, I probably would retch at like half the shit they put on here, but you know what? They pay me enough. I will fucking edit their articles. Okay. Cause, uh, I may not have a degree in English, but you know what? My grammar is pretty goddamn good. Uh, but this is known as freedom of religion, but atheists have interpreted it as freedom from religion, which it isn't. Um, yeah, let's see. Freedom of religion, which means if you have no religion at all, I mean, you can, it, even though it's not really a religion, you could, for the purposes of that, you can count it as that. In other words, leave us the fuck alone. Don't try and force us into your religious beliefs. You know, for the purposes of that argument. You know, right. The, it's, yeah, the whole point of like you know being a, 
you know, freedom of, freedom from, all that stuff. It's it's so that, you know, you don't have to, you're, you're not forced to pick. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and there isn't just one, you know, that overrides everything. And it's just like, it's like, oh, if you're not religious, well, what? Uh, how, how, how horrible is that? Yeah. At the oh, end of the day. Yeah. Oh, no, they don't believe in my God. Oh, my. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're that concerned about them, do what everybody else in your religion will do. Get on your knees and pray. At least you can feel like you're doing something. You may not have a lot to show for it, and, and you're going to be out of everybody else's hair. So, you know, maybe you can feel better about yourself there. You know, hey, why not? Yeah. Atheist groups seem to attack religion, especially Christianity, wherever they can find it. They have demanded that a small-town high school football program stop using their field for prayer meetings and attacked Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker for tweeting a Bible verse. Okay, the, using the field for prayer meetings, eh, I, is, if that if it's not an official high school sanctioned event, if it's just like something that's done that's not school funded or whatever, because because schools, you know, they have like little. You can have like little prayer meetings with like little groups that are not officially affiliated with the school or whatever. You can have your little student gatherings or whatever, you know, and that's fine as long as it's not disrupting anything. In right. That. I mean, so, yeah, if, if you have like a Christian student coalition or something where you just gather to have prayer, nothing's prohibiting you from doing that. Right. There's so, nothing in the Constitution that says you can't open a book or you know open a Bible or a Koran or the Torah or a copy of Dianetics and, you know, spend the 15, you know, spend 15 minutes or whatever on your, of your free time reading from it or praying towards Mecca or anything like that. Yeah. But there's, that doesn't mean that we should say like, okay, well we need 15 minutes of prayer because yeah. I, 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 I like prayer and everybody else would like it too because it allows them to get closer to God. Yeah. And and the the link that they actually share goes to surprise surprise another conservative tribune article where they talk about how the American Humanist Association writ letter to the county school board about of this place complaining about the prayer which is basically a football team and its coaching staff who have the audacity to pray before games that is the article's wording not my own and it's like okay if that's relig if that's official school official sanctioned thing then yeah, that, that's not exactly kosher. You know, you, you know, pray and everything, but, you know, it, it can't be, like, officially school-sanctioned. Or... Right, I'm, and I'm glad that you bring that up, because mm -hmm. when I was in theater mm -hmm. in high school, um, we would pray before every show. And it it wasn't, this was totally taken on by the students. The, you know, the, the school sponsors didn't have anything to do with it. Um, and you know, nobody felt guilty or whatever if they didn't want to participate. They just didn't go to the prayer. And yeah. it was just that simple. You know, there was there was no pressure behind it. It was, if if you want to pray with us before the show, that's great. And if you don't, that's fine. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. despite growing up as non-religious, I, I did actually attend the prayers before the shows. Mm -hmm. Um. And anybody who has been in theater probably understands why I would do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. But there's yeah. also a difference between being spiritual and being religious, and that's an, a discussion for an, another show. Yeah. Um, and my senior year, the, our um, director who came in and told us that we couldn't pray before the show. Uh-huh. And and we were like, "What?" And, and we did it anyway cuz we were like, uh, excuse me, you, you can't tell us we can't pray on our own." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, "No." No. So It's like we didn't expect everyone to do it and you know, we certainly didn't expect the director to do it. Like I don't think a director ever joined us for it. Yeah. That, that's fine. Um you know, oh, yeah, it, but there's a difference between what the school will allow and what the school makes somebody do. Right. I mean, just like growing up, I grew up a, around a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. 
there were a lot of things that they couldn't do because of their religion. And yeah. so they just had different activities. And that didn't mean that we all had to do whatever it was that catered to their religion. It was just that they had different things that they could and couldn't do. Yeah. And the other one that they also link is the uh, Scott Walker for tweeting a Bible verse. They, of course, goes to another conservative tribune.com link because, you know, where else will they, will they yeah, link guys, this article? Yeah, guys, start linking outside of your own website, please. Yes. It's hard to yeah. take anybody seriously at that point. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't even mention what the verse was that Walker had tweeted. And that is kind of stupid. I mean, it's, it's like, okay, why are you attacking him for, for a Bible verse? Is it because of the verse or is it because he's tweeting a Bible verse while being a raging hypocrite? Because I can see the latter more than the former. Yeah. Because it's yeah. your own personal Twitter. You tweet whatever the fuck you want. I don't care who you are. All right? Well, a couple months ago, I tweeted a Bible verse. There you go. I mean, I did it because it was funny. Yeah. For a religious quote, anyway. Well, yeah. There you go. <laughs> but it, it was Something like... Uh, something about... Like the floods, oh, Jesus reigns or something, but they had misspelled reigns. <laughs> And I was like, uh, oh, guys, uh, like, I'm pretty sure that I haven't misunderstood this religious concept my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't actually fall from the sky. <laughs> no, but that would be, that would be kind of funny. Just have like little Jesus is falling from the sky. Like, <laughs> you can pick one up and, and of course, you know, it'd be Jesus. So it'd be like nearly indestructible. So you can pick one up, take it home. You have your own pet Jesus. I'm going to pet Jesus. <laughs> That would be awesome. We need to, a we buddy need to make Christ? pet Jesus. Yes. Oh, no, no, both. You know, have the buddy Christ, and then you have a little pet Jesus that plays with the buddy Christ. Right. <laughs> it's like having multiple pets. You have one to keep the other one company? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We can, like, film and put it on YouTube and shit. That would be awesome. <laughs> buddy Christ, this is baby Jesus. <laughs> Doing all their cute things together. Yes. Look, oh, look, they just turned water into wine. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> look what happens when I tickle baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we just fed a whole community with this one plate of fish and bread. Sweet. How did we do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buddy Jesus tricks. Yes. <laughs> He's turning water into wine and... Oh, wow. <laughs> Multiplying fishes and loaves. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Okay. So... Oh, look. Oh, look. My buddy Jesus just raised that dude from the dead. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Uncle Billy. Yay. <laughs> oh, he cured another leper. Yay. <laughs> oh. So atheists have tried to get the phrase, in God we trust, remove him urine removed from U.S. currency, sought to remove the 9-11 Memorial Cross from Ground Zero, and have now teamed up with progressives in the IRS to monitor, target, in, quote, in uh, parentheses, Christian churches, for their conservative messages that are based on biblical teachings. Um, I, I, if the IRS is monitoring or targeting these churches, I don't think it has to do with the messages. That doesn't make any sense. No. It, 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 it doesn't, because, like I just said, it's probably not the message, it's probably tax evasion. I'm, or, like, I'm seriously rereading this paragraph going, like, what in the fuck is this supposed to mean? I don't know, I mean, okay, I haven't seen much in the In God We Trust, you know, being petitioned to be taken off the money. It would be nice, because then that then the government would look less like it's trying to endorse one religion over the other, which legally is, is a big no-no. You know, on a personal level, I don't care if it's on the money, but from a legal standpoint, that's a big no-no. Because, hi. Well, and the whole thing with, you know, in God we trust on our currency was just, it was added in the 50s as a response to, you know, the communist, you know, the Red Scare. Yeah. Or at least paper money was. I, I don't know about, I, I think coin, you know, I, I think coins had it on, on there a little sooner. But it, it, it was not at the advent of our government that we had in God we trust on our currency. Yeah. yeah. And then they... I, I did reread that now, and I get it. it. It's just that for those of you who are listening to this, there that paragraph is a single sentence. Yeah. And and there is, you know, aside from the period at the end, two pieces of punctuation in it. 
There are yes. two commas in there. So I was like, I don't understand what this means. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. And then the 9-11 Memorial Cross from Ground Zero, that is like, okay, did it just fall that way? Okay, whatever. You know, meh. Uh, whatever. And I think, and I, I think the end, it was like, it, it just allowed it to stay there for, you know, like historical purposes or whatever, because it's just whatever, you know. So, yeah. uh, so this laser-like focus and constant assault on Christianity by atheists has left actor Kevin Sorbo, oh goody, wondering why oh, atheists no. are so offended by something they don't believe in. Oh God, I hate this argument so yeah. much. It's like, okay, here's the thing. Yes, atheists they don't believe in Christianity as it's told by modern telling, whatever, by the Bible. They don't believe in the Bible, don't believe it's the word of God, don't believe in God. Reason why they're so riled up is because people constantly, people who, who, who are so concerned about Christianity somehow dying, despite the fact that it's the most common religion in the world at this point, uh, will will continue to like try and make special exemptions for it and try and make it the overriding state religion of of this country and will try and it's it, it's 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 not about the fact that they don't believe in it and that it's just the fact that they that it won't go away and it won't it, they they can't like be I don't know I don't know how to say it it's, it's... I'm gonna interrupt for a second because there's some breaking news Joan oh. Rivers has just passed away oh no yeah. Seriously? Jeez. Yep. Damn. That that's that's oh. that's sad. Hey, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, except for like one very recent thing that I saw from her, until then I honestly thought she was already dead. It's one of those things oh. that's like, oh shit. Oh. So it's oh shit, I thought she was already gone, and then oh shit, she really is gone. Sad. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, wow. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, oh. I, I really don't know how to segue from that, so I'm going to Carlin it back into the, to the, uh, holy <laughs> shit, the, back into okay, the article. Yeah. 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 So, uh, happened right here on this very show, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking um, news, yeah. Yeah. Um, ah, so, uh, anyways, where was that at? Okay. I've seen these guys, atheist activists, on TV and cable outlets. I see the anger when these guys get on TV, said Sorbo, adding, and I'm going, wow, how do you get so angry about something you don't believe in? Okay. I'm, I'm going to go over to the, the, the uh, fiction, you know, the fan fiction type community. You know, things like, well, let's use the Doctor Who fan community. Hi, Whovians. How you doing? You know. We don't believe in the Doctor in terms of a deity or whatever. We all know that the Doctor is never going to appear in our front yards or in our bedrooms in his magical blue box and whisk us away on an adventure in time and space. We know that's not going to happen. We understand this. But we watch the show and we see, say, okay, like, say, the Angels Take Manhattan episode where Amy and Rory end up dying at the end. It's been a few years. I am not worried about spoilers. You know, and people can get upset about that. People can get angry over that. Maybe because they wanted Amy and Rory to have a better ending. Or maybe they didn't want them to die, you know, and leave the show by death. You know, they get angry over them and they don't believe in them in terms of de deism or whatever. But we still get angry over them. So, you know, and, and even then, even taking all of that away... We're not angry about your god. We don't give a shit about your god. Or your... I don't care what you believe in, as long as it doesn't spill over and start dictating policy, yeah. official yeah. government policy. Like, I don't care if you believe that giants exist, but if you somehow convince the government that we need to be on the lookout for these giants and start funneling money into, like, giant SWAT teams or something, I don't know then that's a problem because you're diverting money to something that why do we need to do this yeah. I'm, I'm laughing a little bit because you said giant SWAT teams and I was thinking SWAT teams composed of giants and I'm like that that would be awesome that would be, that would be actually that would, that would... <laughs> that'd be pretty neat and oh god <laughs> oh lordy, lordy. really another conversation 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Sorbo finds it weird that atheists spend so much time and effort going after things like simple nativity scenes, particularly when they claim such things are meaningless and hold no merit. It, 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 it's not the nativity scene in and of itself. It's the fact that you have it on the state property that is paid for with taxpayer money, and thus it is government showing that it, it, it's endorsing of one religion over another. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. the God we trust on on the public buildings in Alabama, and you then know? you freak out when people want to put like a menorah or a Festivus pole or any other kind of holiday um, decoration that isn't a Christmas decoration. Yeah, so it, it's not about it, it, with these guys. It's it's not so much about religious freedom for all. It's religious freedom for Christians. So right. the sooner they admit this the sooner we can deal with the problem and we can work on and, and, and move on after that. Which, um, we're, we are running a little low on time, so it's just kind of a you know, kind of a skim over the end of it here. Uh, it does note that Sorbo played an atheist college professor in the new movie, God's Not Dead, which portrays the struggle between the professor and a Christian student. And that was based on an internet chain letter. They made a movie out of a chain letter. Oh, yeah. Was that the guy who was like, uh, you know, I'm going to drop this chalk and, you know, if it doesn't break, then that means that God is is alive or, or something. And then, yeah. mm -hmm. the oh, God, that bullshit. Yeah. And then, like, he drops it and it drops in a different way and then it doesn't break and the guy converts or whatever. And it's like or he li or he like, yeah, he drops it on. It was like collar or something accidentally and it like rolls down and doesn't break after the one kid stands his ground and then. After the the professor runs out in shock and shame, the kid lectures everybody on how on how awesome Jesus is. Yeah, because there there are no coincidences in this universe apparently, because God and Jesus are controlling everything. Yeah, you know, no that... record of this ever happening. No record of a of a teacher ever doing anything like this. Yeah, yeah, it's just made up. You know, no coincidences. Mm -hmm. In fact, it wasn't a coincidence that I, I won the, the Mega Man 3 square painter painting at MAGFest. You know, that wasn't a coincidence. That was God, apparently. Yeah, you know. he knows you like Mega Man. Yes, definitely. <laughs> He's doing you a solid, bro. I know, Do you right? best convert. Yeah, no, because I know better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and the thing is, I, I, I like these kinds of shows because I, I am an agnostic atheist, and I'm dating somebody who is a Christian. And a lot of the same arguments that I make, a lot of the same things I bitch at, she will be right there bitching with me. So, And, and that makes for a really, really good conversations between the two of us. And when we actually get team up and we like, like co-bitch at things or whatever, it's just doubly awesome. Because you can see one person looking at me and be like, oh, you, you don't even believe in this stuff or whatever. And then she comes along and be like, bitch, I do believe in this shit. You're making me look bad now. Stop it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. yeah, all I've got to say is uh, oh, Kirk Cameron, Kevin Sorbo, stop making my girlfriend look bad. Stop pe making people like my girlfriend look bad. You are not doing anybody any favors. Stop and... making yourselves look bad. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Stop making yourselves look yeah, bad. Look like dumbasses. There you go. Like Kirk Cameron, you will never be in a Die Hard movie, no matter how much you want your poster to say otherwise. Yeah. Oh lordy. <laughs> Man, Kevin Sorbo. I don't even remember you from Hercules, but the only reason I know he was from Hercules is because people have mentioned it. It's like, oh yeah, wasn't he Hercules? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was also in Meet the Spartans. Oh, really? Yeah. So. Yeah. But, yeah. But with that, we are going to go ahead and get out of here because we are just about out of time. Uh, if we wanted to find you on social media, Gonzo, where could we find you? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Tumblr at Gonzo Link. I also am on the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. I'm also part of Team Brotherhood's uh, bridge series of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Abridged. I also have my own podcast, Focus on the Frames, it's a podcast about movies that I host with Zenith Will Rule, and you can find that on focusontheframespodcast.tumblr.com or on Zenith's YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review. Sweet. And where could we find you, Holly? You can find me all over the internet as Gookie Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. You can also find me on Facebook. My Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown. Oh, sorry, I got distracted. Peanut's having a puppy dream. 
just you. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear it still. <laughs> um, and uh, you can also find me over at Nerdvice. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find Peanut on my Vine. <laughs> Which is yes. also Goofy Gox. Sweet. That's fine. We will go and we will go look at your vine after this show. I have uh, a vine too. Gone to link. Sweet. I do not have a vine. I don't want a vine. But what I do have <laughs> is Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer two one double X. And if you can, and if you look up both of those, you can find out how to find me on Facebook as well, because uh, my name is actually on my Twitter account. So if you really want to find me on Facebook, just look at me on Twitter, and you can find me easily. Um, I do have stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. If you want to look at all of my other shows and podcasts and everything, that gets posted between the two sites. And, of course, those sites also have their own Facebook pages. And uh, my site in particular does have its own Tumblr, rtgomerprod. Uh, check that out. That's where all the updates go. That's where we can do things. And this show in particular does have its own Tumblr. Uh, I think it's uh, CondeconRTG on a, at Tumblr dot, dot Tumblr dot com. I'll I'll link it in the description for this video. You know, for the video and, and all that. So that way you guys can just go and look at it because my memory sucks right now. Uh, and and if you want to like write into the show or what have you, send in send in your questions over there. We'll we'll set them aside and we might even. Might even if we get enough, we might take a show and like answer some questions and and respond to emails. So that'd be kind of neat. Oh, uh, but um, but you know that's where that can be found. Again, that's going to be in the description if you're looking at this on like YouTube or on the sites or whatever. And if you want to help support this show uh, monetarily speaking, uh, if you like this show, like the other shows that I do, and you want to do that, then head on over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 double X, and you can pledge as little as a dollar per video, or per production, rather, is how I have it. And, you know, that all goes towards site stuff. It all go, also goes towards, you know, eventually getting me to the point where I could actually make a living doing this. That's one of my big goals. Um, that, and, and of course, also making a living with the whole upgrading and the everything. Um, and also, we do have a, a special fundraising thing going on right now uh, i've got a gofundme set up for site space because yeah, these podcasts get uploaded directly to the site they don't go to like media fire or anything else they go directly to the site and we're running low on space so we do need a little bit of help on that and the link to that is also going to be in the uh, in the description below if you want to donate any amount of money towards that and that's that's going to go strictly towards site space and if we even if we get beyond site space thing i think it's like a 200 dollars buffer after that for the site space costs then uh then that'll go towards like artwork for the site that we can use to upgrade you know you know like for all of us producers or whatever i'm rambling a bit um <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> yes, I am. But, but i will ramble about one last thing and that is the artwork that you can see if you're watching this on the video version or if you're listening to it on your like your ipod or whatever there should be the title card popping up there that is done by the absolutely talented becky hopkins who is not only my girlfriend but she is also my title card artist and she also has a patreon patreon.com slash becky hop which also contains links to her deviant art account and her own personal site and if if you throw enough money at her, she will do for you a 30-second animation. That's right, folks. 30 seconds of animation from an award-winning animator. Go check her out, Becky Hop, over on Patreon.com. And that should about do it. Thank you guys for listening, and thank you guys for letting me ramble at you for a little bit, little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly know how to do that. Oh. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link, signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.